Hi guys. Hey, good afternoon. Welcome to Santa Monica Sassoon Academy. My name's Stan Newton, Director of Education for North America. Great to see you here on um, American Salon. And Tracy is going to be doing an amazing demonstration for you here. So those of you that are going to stay and watch for the whole term, that's going to be great. We're going to be answering questions for you. I'm going to direct your questions straight to Tracy. So welcome, Hi. Tracy. Hi, guys. Welcome. It's great to be here. I always love to share hair. Love when it's captured by Randy Taylor here. And always excited to do some work for American Salon. Okay, so Lauren here working on uh, a bob, working with sections to graduate. I just want a really kind of fit to the head, versatile look, um, but a very chic, sharp edge. So I'm going to work here in the fingers, lots of tension. That will graduate the edge. The, the graduation basically will just take that hair, especially really thick hair, which Lauren has, and get it to just have a bend and a bevel. And that's even before blow dry. So we really can and do have control of the hair before we even think about finishing the hair. It's the shape that counts, it's the cut that counts, and that's all done with scissor and comb hair. I've got my, my voice in double that, which is always good. Okay. So horizontal sections. Horizontal, I think, I'm gonna talk a little bit how I teach in the academy. So something like this would be something very typical you'd see either on an ABC towards the end of the week or on a salon creative. And salon creative is really where we mix up our, our technique. We still work strength of precision, but we start mixing up the techniques in really modern ways to give proportions for the now. So with this, a bob look. Julian and Gerard are <laughs> Heckling, yeah. hi guys. Yeah. <laughs> they're doing, they're doing um, Facebook Live challenges with us today, aren't they? <laughs> we're sparring, Facebook sure. Live sparring with the boys. Okay, so working through here horizontally, horizontal sections, um, just keep your hands down lower. And I want the graduation to be low at the edge, because then later, later I'll go through and layer and take some weight out of the hair. So like I said, working more in a salon creative course, this is something where we've combined some of these classical techniques to make and create a look for now. So we've got Smell from Morocco watching Tracy. So wow, from nice Morocco, I'd like to be there smell, now. Yeah, and um, Jessica from Louisiana says hi. Hi, Jessica. And Gerard, of course, is commenting, is saying that there's no challenge. You are the queen. <laughs> I'm not sure about that because I think right now he's sat home at my house and I'm here working. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so nice even tension. I think that's really the key. Um, clean comb. What I mean by that is just how the hair is combed from roots to ends. And you see it's really, really clean. The roots control the ends. That's how I look at it. So if that's clean, when you release it, that edge is clean as well. That's kind of one of, I like to just give out lots of little tips more than looking at this as a, as a whole of a haircut. So there'll be lots of little tips in this that people could take away and use in different different um, instances. Okay, so we've had someone from um, Greece has joined us, Tracy, so... Uh, I don't know oh, any Christina Greek. from Greece. Christina, hi Christina we, from Greece. Where got... in Greece is Christina? Let's ask her. Yeah. Oh, can use with a little Mykonos right now. Okay, so just getting that edge beveled. Really aiming here um, with this kind of really square line. I use the, the facial features obviously in body proportions, but with something like this, really aiming for the corner of the jaw. It's my point of reference. From there, just wrapping around to the bottom bulbous part of the lip, which is a really beautiful feature I'm wearing. So when you're working your lines, I think that's key. You know, remember your lines are like arrows. They point in a direction. I mean, some of, this thing, some of the things that I'll say are kind of rudimentary, but I think sometimes when we're really busy, we forget, and those things are super important. If they just become part of your repertoire, you kind of get things to fit straight away. Suitability is key to it, as well as precision. So Tracy, we've got a question. First question about hair is from Gerard. 
course from Hairbrain. Is. So thanks, Gerard. Um, his question is: um, Does your elevation differ if the hair is thicker? Uh -huh. um, good question. Thank you, Gerard. And Gerard is the co-founder of, of, of Hairbrains. And Gerard is an amazing hair cutter. Um, and thanks for the question, Gerard. So does the elevation differ? Well, I, it, it differs more and dependent on where you want the weight to sit than the actual texture. So you have to, I think, always have look in mind. That's kind of one of my mantras right now. So you have to envision where you want the weight to sit and the elevation will get you there. I think length has everything to do with texture. So on finer hair, this might have to be shorter and tighter so I get the same tucked in little edge mm -hmm. to the look. Does that answer your question, Gerard? Yeah, let's see if he comments. Another great question listening. that's just come in. I like the comb. This is from Leanne, Liana. Um, she likes the comb. What brand of comb is that that you're working with today, Tracy? Thanks, Liana. These are YS Park combs. YS Park, and they come in variations of color or absence of. Absence of, sorry, wrong comment. Absence of, which I love. Clear comb. Um, and, I, and we do, um, this one I got at Salon International. We sell them in our, our London Academy. Um, but I'd also like to give out a shout out to Eden Sassoon and her little um, nonprofit that supports clean water. And she created a clear comb for Beauty Gifts Back. Clean water, clear comb. Okay, so in the interest of time, I have done um, the whole of the other side. And so what I could do now is use that. I've worked to just the top of the ear with the graduation, bevel the edge. And now what I'll do is layer this through. So I'll work vertical sections. And I'm gonna layer off the head, round it slightly through. So there's my section. It's a little bit, I'm a little bit higher, so let me just resection that. You see that? That's from the other side. It's not easy to cut one half, the whole one half and the other half, but we, we did that for this, for this exercise. So normally in the salon, if you were working on this, you'd work your one side graduation, other side graduation, and then you work the whole of the back with your layering technique. So let's just get this resection and then I'll do this for you guys. Okay. Sorry, Amanda. Okay, we've got another question coming in, Tracy, from An Angelia Aguina. Mm -hmm. she, she'd like to know, will the bob have the 45 degree angle in the back? Will the bob be 45 degrees? The, the bob actually will, ha will be more of a square line. So what that means is, a, is an evil, e evil, <laughs> an evil proportion. <laughs> Could be that today. An equal proportion uh, from front to back. So what this is here is that through the front. Um, on the profile, the edge, just the little edge is gonna be graduated. So 45, if you think of it, would be way up here. So no, it won't. It won't. It's going to be layered through. So it'll be very strategically layered. The layering that's added here is more for internal dynamics than creating a shape. It's just layered, and you'll see it's a very fine, it's what I call take the edge off. So you've put the weight in the hair. It's very thick hair. You've created your bevel on the edge, and now I layer it just to take that and sit it and fit it to a leaner silhouette and just take the edge off the line. But the line will still be very definitive in the end. So vertical sections work in flat or square to what we consider square to the head, meaning drawing all the hair back so that you maintain your corners and length behind the ear. So Tracy, we're in the Santa Monica Academy, your home. Yes, um, what, what kind of, is, is this typical of what our students see here at the Academy? Yeah, I think it's what they see, what they do. I mean, we work here and base everything we do off of our proprietary techniques of lines, layers, and graduation and cutting. And we work off the ABCs of cutting ladies, men's, and, and color. And so the way we teach, I mean, I've, I've, this, is, this is my home. I've been here 20 years now teaching. I love it. Um, we have a cosmetology school here. Um, and I love when I can get my hands in, in, and share hair with the, the young ones coming up. Um, and this is our advanced academy as well. 
So, yeah, this is exactly at different levels what you'd see or do if you attended the academy. Uh, we have many courses at many levels from ABC 1, ABC 2. I kind of think of ABC 1, it's new this year. We started it last year, but I think this year it's really going to take on. And I think it's like, for me, a prerequisite. There's a lot of people that have been to Sassoon, um, but there's a lot of people that haven't. And they're the young ones that have just graduated from another school or a young assistant that's trying to kind of build their confidence and, and get to... Um, to the floor to get on the floor and take whatever apprenticeship exercise they have in the salon. Um, and so I think of ABC One as that, as a, like a prerequisite to Sassoon. Uh -huh. um, so anybody that hasn't been to us before, ABC One would be the, what I recommend to take. Um, I kind of, I mean, what I've done in my life is created a career in education, literally. And I kind of keep telling people that's what they should do at Sassoon not just come here once or twice, but through their whole career, have a career in education. So every time they come here, they might want to work on something else. And there's many courses to kind of satisfy that, that educational need. Okay, so I'm just checking this through. So lifting the hair up and out. See that nice clean, clean line there. So Tracy, not only are we doing a demonstration digitally live right now, we're also demonstrating to, to some of our current students. <laughs> so maybe you perhaps just um, introduce them or, or how, how we work both digitally and, and utilise that in the academy here. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hi guys, please. Hi guys. <laughs> We have a new learner here. <laughs> a new learner here. Yeah. <laughs> I've asked him to hold sections. He's not ready for it. <laughs> um, but no, uh, we have a few students that weren't with clients today, and so I've asked them to come up. Um, obviously, being used to having an audience, it kind of doesn't feel right if I don't have one that's live. Um, so we have one of our cosmetology students, and we also have one of our comprehensive students. And our comprehensive class is a six-week class. I think of it like a mini apprenticeship for those that don't work for Sassoon. Two comp students. Sorry. You snuck in behind me. And um, so hairdressers are ready, right, you guys? Hairdressers are ready and here honing their craft and, and helping, you know, they come in and it's, a, it's one or two teachers that take them through the six weeks so we can really get them to their personal best in the time that they're here and help them achieve their goals and technique. Okay, so what I've done is I layered through that panel and then I'm going to take another section and cut it on the graduation. It's about a combs width section, yeah? And that section will be left out, it won't be layered through. Then I'm going to take a panel from here through to the sides, just above the parietal ridge. That panel is going to get layered through and will sit on top of that. So what we have is a little graduated edge that's layered out, a strip of hair that's cut one length, and then a layer that sits on top of it. Okay? Does that make sense? To me? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if we you get some questions from our audience. <laughs> check in with our audience. Yeah. Um, let's see. Okay. Quite high on the head. You only need a little bit to fall over, especially with this amount of hair, because you don't you don't want to do all this intricate little work and then have the whole the top just plop back over it. Um, the reason to do all this intricate work is to just have a little bit of a different edge to the hair, and also to create some versatility, meaning the hair can be moved around and parted differently and look completely different. All right, so what you do is you don't have to clip out that little disconnected panel. You can just continue your line until you get through to the front, which is what I'll do now, and then we'll se separate it later. So just continue as if you're working a very classical horizontal graduation. And then ABC is if you want to learn how to do this really well. I tell people to study, it's what we call AB. So it's a bob with graduation which is very different than a graduated bob, I think. And it's done horizontally, beautifully done by Marques on the, on the DVDs.
Ah, here's, so here's a, an interesting question. Um, how do you be a part of the Sasuni team? Ah, good question, great question. And that's from um, Nikolai. I'm not sure where, where Nikolai, does Nikolai is Nikolai live? Because yeah. it could be different in different I'm countries. not sure, let's have a look. Yeah, I can't. I mean, to, to start answering that question, I think mm. with Sassoon, it's got a long heritage um, and history, and it started with the Iman. And I think most people come towards it and are attracted to it because of those two things. Once in it, I think the dedication to the standard is what keep, keeps people in it, the ongoing education. So like anywhere else, we have an interview process. And if someone's interested in working for Sassoon, they go through that interview process. And from there, we have a very set training program that everyone at any level that begins with us starts in the same manner. And there, it's an apprenticeship. And it's set from anywhere from nine to months to two years, 24 months, uh, depending on the individual, depending on the timing depending on the need. There's a lot of variables in that, depending on the level of experience someone comes to us with. Um, and it's a very structured, very consistent training program for obvious reasons. Because I think if you want to get good at anything, and I know a lot of people that are around me have heard me say this regularly, but I really believe that you have to practice perfectly. So we take people through the haircut step by step and the understanding of cutting hair and the understanding of the principles and suitability and how those things tie in in time management to be a really successful stylist in one of our salons. If someone then wants to be a teacher with us, generally the, their first success needs to be in the salon building a clientele so that they can show and share that the techniques work and prove that's worth to themselves and prove that they can be successful. Mm. Because what we have here in the academy are very, very successful hairdressers that come to us weekly. And what they're looking to do is to learn how to do hair like this and to better their technique. And their businesses are very good. So we wanna make sure the people that teach them understand that part of them. Yeah. So we're getting some great interaction, <laughs> Tracy. Sorry to cut in. Um, somebody saying that they were here in October and were taught by Colton. What an amazing experience, so that's really good. Yeah. Um, somebody's also asking about the tools that you're using, in particular your scissors. Yeah. So maybe you could... Talk Magic about scissors them. they are. Magic, <laughs> of course. Magic scissors. Share the magic. <laughs> <laughs> um, these are Hikari New Cosmos which I love. I think they're really perfect for the work that we do. Um, I think like any craft, you have to, your tools have to match. There's always the question of tools. Um, and the tools have to match. So it's assumed the tools that we choose to use, the tool, tools that we choose, let's see if I can get this out, to sell or retail are tools that really fit cutting hair in a very technical manner, coloring hair in a very technical manner. And they fit the craft. Um, craft hairdressing really is what it is. And so they're good quality and they work for, the, they work for us. They work for us. So yeah, these are Hikari New Cosmos. They're my favorite. I've used them for, I've used a lot of different scissors in the time, but these are it for me. Over 20 years, these have been the ones that I've always been in love with. <laughs> so yeah. somebody's asking, can you say that again? Hikari. So, yeah, if you just share exactly the, the name of the scissors, yeah. Tracy. Hikari New Cosmos. Japanese company is Hikari. And the, the, um, the scissor itself is New Cosmos. She just has an H-A-K in, in her spelling. It's H-I-K. Yeah. H-I-K. I'll write that. It's a and, Jersey and, accent and, and, that doesn't ever always <laughs> translate. Yeah. And, My stuffy <laughs> nose. And if they're not here in, in California or anywhere else, can they, can they get those online? Uh, good question. Uh, no, actually, Hikaris do not sell online. Oh. So they'd have to get them from one of our academies. Uh -huh. We do retail them in all of our academies. Our academies, we have Toronto, we have New York City, we have Atlanta, we have Chicago, 
we have Seattle, San Francisco, Los Angeles. There we are. That's where we are. Um, and that's where you can find us. Okay, so I just worked up to this panel. Really just brought everything down to the line. Um, a lot of people question here. I'll ask, I'll ask the question and answer it as well. So I think it's an important part here um, about the ear. And I think, you know, when you learn in the beginning, you have to have rules. And everybody's afraid of getting that dreaded hole over the ear. Um, and I think if you're working with fine hair and you're working with a true line where everything is cut down in the teeth of the comb, you have to be really cautious of that, even if it's a flat line ear. But when you're in the fingers and you're graduating and the hair is meant to be lifted and beveled in, um, you don't really have to worry about that so much. But you still have to keep it in mind. So what I really do is I separate over the ear and I think of what falls behind the ear and I work that with slight, a little bit of backward over direction. And that's where I work. And then when I go to join in this area at the front, especially with the first section. I then pick that piece up and I come back in. So I almost elevate over the ear, so it'll leave realistically that little piece there. So when the hair lifts, it flattens out. Yeah, so somebody's saying that our model is beautiful. She is. Tracy, she beautiful. is. Um, and just a confirmation, please, on the size, the, your preferred size of scissor. Is um, that five inches? Five, yeah, five yeah. inches. Yeah. Yeah. I thought I was being set up there. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to layer the hair. So what I've done is I'll just section this out. And interesting is the layering. What I'm going to do is take a vertical section. And I'm going to pivot, pivot, pivot all the way through till I get to the front of the ear. And then I'll be working over the head horizontally. All right, so I'll take a little that little sliver out that combs with above the layering get that section and fine it and you can clip it away I clip it away it doesn't it won't go away unless you cut through it but I'm going to clip it away so you guys can see what it is and where it is okay so if I lift it up Randy can capture this so we've got the graduation and then I layered off the graduation and then there's my panel disconnection that was just tied on so I'm just going to clip and leave that out. So that's not layered, nothing's done to that, it's just tied onto the line. What I think is really modern right now is, is having a lot of disconnection internally, um, but it doesn't hang over the shape. That's kind of my thing right now. I think that looks really cool. All right, so I can clip that away, and then I can start the layering. Uh, the first time you do it, you might want to clip it away, just because what will naturally happen sometimes is you'll kind of go through it, and then that gets layered too. But it'll be this nice little fin of length when the hair is pulled out that'll have some structure to it because it hasn't been layered. All right, so let's do a vertical section right here. So thanks for the tip around the ears, Tracy. Okay. We're getting some interaction there. Tracy, um, people have been sort of saying the hair looks very thick. She's got a lot of hair. Um, how have you prepared the hair? Have you used any products to help you? Um, no, shampoo, conditioner, um, nothing to prep the hair with. I don't really work with any cutting um, lotions or anything to prep the hair. I mean, I'll show some things you, you may need to because of the time that you're doing and the process is very different than in the salon. But in the salon, shampoo, condition, um, really the hair shine and everything is from the color. This was colored a few days ago. Um, we work with Wella. Uh, we will post a color formula in the comments later and a finished look on Lauren later. And I will prep the hair with um, styling um, product before I do a blow dry. But the way I use styling product is really just to maximize shine and flexibility of the hair, not a lot to make the look. The look is being cut in right now. Okay. All right, so you see how I'm just pivoting through here. And as I'm pivoting, I'm elevating higher and higher. So what I do is leave the length that's cut onto the graduation right there, it's in my knuckle. And I layer everything out from above it. That sits on top of that little one length fin. 
and just pivot right around. It's slime time, you guys. I think I'm doing it right. I'm not sure of that. Okay, guys, so. So for anybody that's just joined, working um, a very salon-friendly, I think, look. Speaking of, Robert Cronin's just joined. <laughs> ah. Hello, Robert. <laughs> One of my favorite people. Um, Robert describes me sometimes and he introduces me. I hope I'm okay if I say this. <laughs> but he introduces me. So this is Tracy. Do you know who she is? She's a creative for Sassoon, creative director for Sassoon, and she cuts hair with a very small pair of scissors. <laughs> <laughs> and I love that. He says that. <laughs> yeah, says hi. <laughs> We just spent a week, I just spent a week in Hawaii and, and watched Robert cut hair actually, and vacation and holiday. So Tracy, it's been a very busy time for us. We, we had Issy. Yeah. You, you know, what, what's your movements and you, you know, where can people maybe see you or, or get more hands-on experience education with you or any of our team? Oh yeah, well we're here, here full time. You know, basically Sassoon education is seven days a week. As much as we do internally in our academies, we do externally. So for instance, next week I'll be going to Austin, Texas, doing an in-salon seminar. I do a lot of that kind of work where we, we go to someone's salon and work with their whole of their team. So um, Sassoon Direct. It's called Sassoon Direct, yeah, and it's an in-salon seminar. Um, and then this year we'll be at ABS, We're doing, which is what's next in the big venues. ABS Chicago, and what we'll be doing there, which we're really excited about, because that's my favorite thing, is we're doing a classroom. And what that means, it's gonna be more of this, step by step. Finished looks, obviously, but you're gonna see everything wet to dry and the colors applied and how we work together as a team in that aspect as well. Um, and then from there, we'll be in New York, celebrating 100 years of IBS. Wow. Um, but everything in between and at all levels. Uh, most recently, which I think is cool, and I'll be doing one of these soon too, next week, I think, um, one-to-ones. Yeah. So I have two girls coming in to do one day of cutting with me and at the same time a day of color with Lucas. And that'll be really cool because we'll share the models. Um, yeah, and I've uh, this year, you know what I did? I, I put in two-day courses that I'll be teaching, which I'm really excited about because I think over the years, people have said to me, really busy stylists, I really want to come, but I just need a couple days with you, and I need it more often. So we've done that. That's super exciting. Mm -hmm. But yeah, all the time, all the time, anywhere. Like I said, all the academies. We have an amazing academy and team that's teaching in um, New York, led by Martin Duff and Elaine Mitchell. And they're amazing and so much fun. And that's a great two days to spend with Sassoon if you're on the East Coast. Okay, so the layering here just fits everything back down. So it just gives you that really lean silhouette. We can take these little clips out. And then we can tie in the top. Working off a of center parting with this. Working off a of center part. So I'll just continue my Bob story now through the top. Everything comes back down. Disregard the layering that was just put in. Everything comes back down on the, on the edge. Um, there's this really cool mel melon streak in here too, which I love was made, it's not hers, it was put in. But I think it's a really cool idea for, for dark hair, um, just mm. as a natural one would be. And that was done um, not too long ago. We have a collection course here, which we work off the collections. And actually, I give Marques the credit for that, right? He was the mm. one that said, give her a melon streak. So it's just kind of um, really beautiful gray, which is a really great color for the moment. And again, the formulas, we'll put the formulas in the um, comments, the comments. Okay, so I'm going to continue, like I said, my Bob's story. So just working as you would classically, lots of tension, like I said, clean comb, roots to ends, bringing all the hair down. What I tend not to do is that, which means grip all the hair together, because that's when you get that heavy step. What I do is I section the new section, if I can find it, let's see where it is, let's get it. Get it, let's get it. And then I pre-section. So I'm holding about, I mean, I always reference a comb, like it combs with the hair, yeah? 
so I do that. So that's clean, that's clean. That gives you the control to actually elevate a little bit more. Okay? Let's get this cleaned up. How are we doing for time, you guys? We good, Randy? Okay. Good. All right, I'm there. And then what we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, I'll recap and do a close. I'm gonna blow dry off camera and we'll actually put the finished look in the comments with the formula, with the color formula. So yeah. Tracy, you're gonna be you're gonna be blow drying off camera and mm -hmm. present the final look. Yeah. So how will you do that? What what will you do? How will you do that? What tools? I was hoping you'd do it actually. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it if you want me to for sure. Um, okay, uh, blow dry, flat back vest brush. Simple. It's simple hair. It's really beautifully straight hair. Like I said, the bevel in it is was cut in. Um, so I'll put in, you know, the, the, the product formulation, I mean, we're, we're using IME, but the product formulation that I use overall, whatever um, brand you use, is what I call expensive water. So some kind of leave-in conditioner that really softens the hair mm. and brings out its natural texture. Um, and then a heat protect of some sort. Um, and then if you need more than that to give the hair a little bit of structure and malleability, then you can use something in that, that line. So it's usually two or three products that I use to prep, but the end result, you don't actually see product or read product. So Tracy, are, are you gonna be heading to IBS NYC? It's another question yeah, that's just great. come in. Yeah, absolutely. I'd hate to miss that one, that's my hometown. Um, I started with Sassoon in New York City, so yeah, this year we will be presenting on stage at IBS. It's their 100 year anniversary, and we'll be presenting our latest collection on stage on Monday. Wow. Right now we also run all our two-day courses from New York as well, and they're running from the Wella Studio. Uh, which is down in Soho, and so that's really cool to be able to be in that really beautiful space and share hair. That's led by Martin Zeff and Elaine Mitchell. They're amazing, very experienced as soon, um, creative team members, and they have a blast teaching the courses in New York. Mm -hmm. Randy, I cannot see my balance, but you just let me know if it's okay. <laughs> yeah, it looks good. I think I, Mark's, Mark and I joke around, if it looks good, it's good, Yeah. right? Because I think when you have this much hair, if you pull and tug too much, you kind of feel in for something, but what you need to do is just use your eyes. Have the look in mind, if mind first, your technique will follow. So a little versatile bob, we'll go through the sectioning pattern and then we'll, we'll close it out. Okay? Great, so Tracy, a quick question on that, something very late chilling in. Um, there are questions about the layering. Is it all internal? So. With your recap, I'm sure you will cover Yeah, with the recap, I'll cover that off. Great question. All the layering is internal, and it's in little, fine little panels. So you won't see it. The overall look is a bob, but if you move, when the hair is provoked or moved around, you really be able to see more texture, air, in a sense. I always think of like air. You've put some air in there. So instead of relying on texturizing sometimes to get that edge in hair, um, I'm really using disconnections, just subtle disconnections to do that. Okay, I'm just going to work this edge actually, which I forgot about, Randy, sorry. All right, let's see. So lots of tension on the skin. Back a comb I use. You can use your hand too, but I find the hand casts a shadow. And right now I can use all the light that I can get. Okay, so just following the natural contour of the neck there. Coming around, I always lift the chin up to work behind the ear. And just a little, tiny little C shaping there. Just so you don't lose that corner, which is really important. Great comments, Tracy. Everybody's loving what you're doing. It looks great on camera, that line. Well, that's good. I've been practicing perfectly for a very long time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we've got that in. All right, so quick recap, you guys, yeah? All right, so here we go. 
So starting out in the fingers, on the skin, one finger, when I teach it, I teach people, I give them references, so I say one finger off the skin, two fingers off the skin, three fingers off the skin, just enough to bevel the edge. So they say how high to lift. If you want a number, I won't give it to you. It's a visual. I have the look in mind. We just want the edge of the hair. Instead of it to thatch or stack out, we want it to bevel and curve. So I've worked that to the top of the ear. Once we got to the top of the ear, I took vertical sections and I layered it out. Easy to find all this too, because people say, well, how are you going to do that again? Well, all the sections are really clean and all the panels are really clean, so you can find them find them easily and pick them up easily. So then we went vertically, picked and layered that up, then we left the combs without, and I'll show you that separation. Let's get this vertically, and I think Randy, you can get it that way, nice wide section to share. Okay, so you see where the, and I choose, it's all about the head shape, so you see where the head's really flattest? That's where the disconnection, the little strappy piece or fin of hair or a fin of length is. Let's take that vertically and lift this out. There's the layers. There's the panel that's cut onto the graduation. And then we went from the crown just slightly down to the temple area. And that whole middle panel was layered through and cut on the line. Then the final panel is this narrow triangle set back in the crown so some of it falls over the crown area. Narrow triangle and all that was cut down with lots of tension in the fingers on the line. From there you can clean up your hairline. When you look at it, you just have this beautiful, chic, sharp, that's what she said, Lauren she said, I just want a sharp bob. I said, great. And you just have this really beautiful sharp bob, but it has all these internal dynamics. Here's how the side looks if we lift this out. Okay, this one, Randy, as well. So everything under the round of the head was layered. And there's your layering panel there. And then this, all of this was cut back onto the line. So there's your separation. So it just creates that, which creates some different kind of movement. And like I said, most people, I think, for this kind of textural edged bob, when they dress it in that manner, would kind of cut it heavy and then take the weight out, whether it be razor, scissor, or some kind of freehand. Um, what I like to do is exhaust my technique. If you know something, you know, use it in creative ways and challenge it. And, and that's kind of what the idea is on, on doing something like this. Um, for those of you in the salon, these things are important. These things are gonna keep you interested in your work, keep you enjoying your work, and most importantly, keep your clients coming back because they'll feel that something's different. You may have the similar look, but they're gonna feel there's something different for sure. Okay, I'm good. Okay, so... Um, One more question? No, Gerard's saying how steady your hands are, Randy, after traveling <laughs> so many miles today. <laughs> to um, to like... We've had some great back. interaction, it's fantastic. <laughs> Randy's not here, it's a tripod. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, guys, so thank you. Thank you, guys, everyone, for sharing your time with us, whether it be a few minutes or the whole of it. Um, I thank you. It's always a pleasure to share here. American Salon, thank you for always giving me this little platform to do so on. And uh, we'll see the finished look in the comments.